What's up guys, it's Diedrich Webb, and behind me, as you can see, is my live streaming setup. Now as you can tell, the lighting is really great and the camera and everything looks great from this angle right here. Not so much from, from this angle right here. Obviously done on purpose for the live streaming setup, but in this video I'm gonna show you literally everything of how to set up your live stream setup. Either if you wanna do it this complex or very, very simple. On the technical side, I'm basically gonna walk you guys through all the equipment that I have in this setup right here and then I will go onto the computer basically and show you guys how you set it up in OBS. OBS is the software of choice that I'm using to do all of my live streaming through. So I'm gonna show you guys all of the different input sources as well as the layers inside of OBS that I'm using to do this whole entire setup. So first off though, I wanna walk you guys through the whole setup. So if you're behind the setup, this is what it looks like. And yes, this right here is my living room. As you can see, I basically took my couch that was here, pushed it up to the side, took my chair, put it up against my TV so I can game and stuff. But this is my kitchen slash living room. And I basically set up everything here to do live streaming because it's where I had the most amount of space to pull off this big sort of setup with movers and everything. So first off, let's talk about the setup in terms of the gear that I'm using in terms of DJing, and then we'll talk about the live streaming gear. So starting off on the actual DJ gear, nothing to do with live streaming. What is here? We first have my uh, S9 mixer. This is Pioneer S9, two Rain 12s. I got set up on a little four foot table here. Got my Odyssey laptop stand on the side. My main DJ computer right here running Serato. The only thing this computer is running is Serato. It's not handling anything else but DJing. Then output wise for DJing, I basically have my headphones right here to queue up songs. And then all of my audio is running to my monitors. These are my JBL MK23 monitors. I don't really know the model name, but they're like a five and something. These were on sale and they're a great monitor speaker. So I got two of them. I got this one that you can't see in the live stream set because the laptop blocks it. Got them set up on a pair of basically little home speaker stands right here. And I uh, got the other one over here that you can see. So these are pointed in directly at me. So I have my monitors for DJing. On the side here, I do have a mic, but this mic is not running into my S9. It actually runs into the live streaming audio interface, which we'll get to in a second. The next thing we need to talk about is the lighting. And our lighting is very dramatic with our two movers. Now, obviously all of the lighting is DMX. I'm running donor wireless DMX receivers. There's one right there. There's one right there on the back of the movers. And then all of the up lights are running off of that one right there that's plugged into this up light, which talks to all of those ones. Um, so donor wireless DMX is transmitted from down here. Down here is my Chave Show Express box with my donor wireless transmitter right here that transmits to those receivers. This a USB right here runs up and plugs into this computer right here, which is what's handling all of the lighting and the streaming. And I'll dive into all that here in a second. But this kind of brings us into the the live streaming gear. So what am I running for the actual live streaming gear? So first off, you need to have audio for your live stream. I run all of my audio into this right here, which is a Zoom H6. Now this is definitely overkill. You can definitely get away with something a lot simpler, such as this right here. This is just a simple one channel mixer, but it has a USB out so that you can plug it into a computer. Um, this is pretty much all you need for audio to go into your computer. You just need an audio interface is basically what this is called. All you need basically is an audio interface of some sort. So something that allows you to plug in your audio like this. You can plug it in here, you can plug it to the quarter inch jacks and then output to USB into your computer. And that is pretty much all this does, but a little bit on overkill. So on the screen, I can see my actual levels for all the different inputs that I'm running one through four. So right now on the S9 here, I'm running off the RCA master out. So that way they're linked. I'm not running off the booth. I'm running off the master. So these two XLRs go to my monitors back there. This RCA cable right here is an RCA to XLR cable. So it's RCA on this end, which transforms into XLR right here. So this input goes in here and this input goes in here. So this is channel one, this is channel three, and this is channel four as indicated right here. So channel one, channel three, and channel four. Channel one is panned all the way to the left and channel three is panned all the way to the right. So that way I have a true stereo input. And then channel four here is my microphone, which is this Audio-Technica microphone right here. So if I talk into the microphone, 
microphone right here, you can see that coming through on input number four. And then same goes for the music. So if I turn up the volume on my S9, you'll both hear it through the monitors and you'll see the input coming through on here as well. So right there is the input volume. And then you can also hear it through the monitors. So those are the inputs, and then this is set up as an audio interface. So it's got the USB hookup right here, which then goes into the computer. And basically that is how you get your audio from your device that you're playing and your microphone into your computer. You basically use an audio interface. Now you don't have to use the microphone separate. Like I have the microphone plugged in here, so that way I can record just my music on Serato. So I can record on Serato and then all I hear is the music. I don't hear myself talking on the mic interacting with the chat basically that way I have a clean output for later on if I want to but you could definitely just run your mic in here and then only have your input coming into your audio interface and then running it into your computer and then I'll show you how you set that up in OBS though now Let's talk about cameras. And before we talk about cameras, you notice how nice this picture looks? That's because I'm using a light ring. So right here is my light ring, and I always like to replace one of them with blue. Um, that way it gives a nice little hue offset. I don't know if you can see it like on my face, but doing a color offset either with blue or red really adds to the video picture quality. But yeah, this is my light ring. I only have it on 25% brightness at 3200K, uh, but that's what gives the picture a nice quality. So that way, me standing there, I have a lot of light coming off me versus me not. Then probably what everyone wants to know is what are my cameras? Now this is the main camera. This is what's giving that main picture, which is giving a great picture. This is a Logitech webcam. Specifically, this is the C920. So this camera right here is a 1080p amazing camera. I have it set up on a tripod right here. This is the Logitech C920. I'll link it in the description down below. It's a little pricey, but this is what's giving that amazing picture in terms of the live stream setup. Now, my top-down shot is being done by this camera up here, which is the exact same camera that I'm filming you guys on right now, which is the Canon G7X Mark III. Canon did an awesome thing recently. So Canon, just about a month ago, because of all the coronavirus stuff, uh, released a beta um, installer software for Windows that allows you to use a lot of Canon uh, cameras out there as webcams and one of those was the Canon G7X Mark III. So basically with the Canon G7X Mark III that I have up there, there's a USB connection on the camera via USB Type-C. So I run that into my computer and then when I install the EOS beta software, I'm able to then use the camera as a webcam, just like the Logitech. So that camera is up there and I got a Joby like tripod thing that clamps around stuff that's holding it up there. And uh, what that actually is, is pipe and drape. So I have pipe and drape uh, bases with uprights and then a cross member that runs across. And it's set up so that that basically is up high enough that it's out of the field of view of this camera. And I completely forgot to mention it, but you pretty much can tell. You can see these beams, right? And that's because I have haze running. So I do run haze so that way you can see the beams and stuff. That is being done by my ADJ haze generator that I have down here. I basically run it for like 15 minutes before I start and it produces pretty much enough haze for the whole entire live stream. So now kind of just some minor stuff with basically the setup. I have my little side table here. That way I can keep my drinks. So that way they're within reach. I do have the mic on basically a little arm right here you can use any sort of mic stand or whatever but i basically have a spring loaded arm that i can basically move this around and place it where i need it and then over here i basically have a, a tv setup i got it raised up with uh, my up lighting case actually on a tv tray right here but i have a tv loaded up and this is actually another monitor window for this pc so i actually have an hdmi out that runs to this that gives me a second display and i basically full screen my chat during the live stream so that way i can actually read my chat while i'm djing and panning down from that i'll get to that wire in a second but panning down from that i wanted to kind of point out this wire that runs all the way around here so this is a pro tip to any of you guys that are doing live streams right now and are having problems just in general with live streaming like your video feeds lagging or you're experiencing lag your your video itself is lagging wherever you're live streaming to youtube facebook whatever internet is super critical when you are live streaming you need to have really good internet to live stream it's just it's just the nature of it you're you're like you're uploading basically a live video feed so the faster your internet the better so i'm running hardwired and what that means is i'm running a direct ethernet cable to my laptop and that kind of brings me to the point of this wire right here as well so that wire down there is my ethernet cable running from my office where my internet is i'll show you guys that here in a second but this right here is the usb cable 
for the Logitech webcam, and it all feeds into this post right here. So this is basically a light stand that I've repurposed into basically a cable hiding stand. So the way this works is basically this kind of keeps all of my cables, the one running up here and over, out of the frame of this shot. So it keeps it out of the frame so that when you are here live streaming, you don't see all those cables. And the main reason for that was the fact that I just really didn't have long enough cables. So this cable is hardwired into that and it's only this long. So I had that problem. And then two, my USB type C, the longest cable I have was six foot, which only gets me to right here. So if I had some longer cables, That'd be great, but I don't. And then also, I don't have enough USB inputs. So I have one USB input here for Shave Show Express. And then on the other end here, I only have one other USB input. And that input runs to this USB hub right here. So it's got a USB type B on this end. It plugs into basically this anchor USB hub, which has three USB inputs, one for my Logitech, one for my top down, and one for the audio interface. And then it also has an Ethernet input. So that's how I'm getting hardwired internet. So this right here, is kind of a very crucial device. I'll link it down in the description down below. It's not that much. This basically is an external hub that gives me a ethernet input for my internet because uh, my laptop doesn't have one. It's basically Wi-Fi only unless you buy a hub that then has ethernet. That's how I get uh, my direct line of internet in and this is how I plug in all of my devices. And then again, it's on this basically lighting stand right here. It kind of keeps the cable out of the frame of my main shot. So yeah, streaming wise, that's pretty much it. I'm using a Logitech C920 for my main camera shot right there. I got a light ring to basically light me up. Um, I have this overhead rig that allows me to mount my Canon G7X Mark III up there. I have the Zoom H6, or you can use any audio interface, but I have an audio interface basically um, that's all wired in together with wired internet into this laptop, which then in OBS allows me to configure the live stream. So with everything set up, what I see from my point of view is the following. One, I'm able to DJ, so obviously I can DJ right here and just mix away with this computer. I can talk into this microphone right here to basically communicate, and I can see my whole entire chat over here on the side TV. Now, down here on the side laptop, I have basically my show experience set up so that way I can change all of my different lighting scenes. I have multiple tutorials on my YouTube channel of how to set up Show Express and how to do all this crazy lighting stuff. So that's what that is right here. This is basically my Show Express window. Now obviously streaming I have to have OBS running. So OBS is running in the background right here. So there you can see myself literally on the screen right now. But this is set up in a way that I have hotkeys. So I have set up hotkeys for this screen so I have hotkeys set up for this scene and for this scene right here. So this is the top down shot. This is basically the finished product. Again, I'm going to show you guys how you do the, all of this right here. Right here on the side would be my chat, but I don't have a live stream set up right now. So my chat is not populating, but that is basically the two scenes right there. And they're linked to the keys down below. So number one is linked to this scene right here. So if I press number one at any time, no matter what window I'm on, it'll switch to this scene right here. And I can show you real quick. So I'll show you, this is what I'm normally seeing. If I click two and I go back to OBS, my scene has changed. So this is number two and this is number one. So again, with this open, I can switch between my scenes, basically between one and two, without having to look at the OBS window, which is super helpful. So that way all I have to do is I can have my lighting so I can focus on my lighting, I can focus on my DJing, and then if I wanna switch the camera angle shots, I just go over here and I press the two keys. So if I wanna to talk to the crowd, I just press number one. I know I'm on the main shot. If I'm about to do like a transition or a mix, I click number two. I know I'm on the top down shot, so that way people can actually see me doing the mix live. I'll show you guys how you set that all up in OBS and everything here in a second, but I just kind of wanted to walk you guys through the flow of how I'm able to do my live stream during the live stream. So see the chat, interact with the chat. I can change between my two different scenes. I'll have my lighting up so I can mess with all my lighting. Basically, this is my workflow. Oh, and lastly, on my phone, I always have the stream pulled up so that way I can actually like kind of glance over and view the picture, make sure one, I'm on the, the scene that I think I'm on, and two, just so I can monitor the video feed itself. I, I normally don't have to. I have really good internet. Um, 
don't really have an issue with that, but I always have it pulled up on my phone, so that way if someone in the chat starts saying, hey, it's lagging, or hey, your mic's not on, because my mic's not on, um, I can look down at the video feed and kind of double check some stuff. So I always have my phone pulled up, my phone's displaying the actual live, and uh, normally I just set it down here on my drink stand, so that way I can glance down and just uh, verify the video feed is still going good. So. That's the gear side of it. That is basically everything in terms of gear and how it all works. Let's dive into the software side of OBS in terms of how you set up your stream. Um, it's super easy, but I'm gonna walk you guys through the whole entire process of setting up your stream inside of OBS. All right guys, so I went ahead and I took a seat on the couch basically to show you guys everything, to show you guys how everything works inside of OBS, etc. So let's jump on into it. So let's start with, this is my OBS screen right now. Um, it is lagging a little bit. It's kind of, it's a little bit challenging to both record your screen and to also have OBS open, which is, uh, video sources and OBS is a little bit of a processing intense program especially when you're actually streaming but trying to also screen record on your computer um, it's just really challenging for my computer so this is the OBS screen so this is my main shot and then if I click here I can go to that top-down shot as well um, over here on the right hand side this is where the chat would normally show up on the stream um, because I'm not streaming, I don't have that set up right now for whatever stream I'm going to be doing. But I'll show you guys how basically I set up this shot right here because this shot right here is more complicated than the main shot. The main shot is pretty simple. It's just one camera and a, a source and a few others. But when you first get OBS, when you first download OBS, and I'll link it down in the description down below as well if you guys want to get this program. First thing you're going to want to do is plug in all the devices you're going to be using and make sure you install the correct drivers so that way you can use those devices. I have all of my cameras hooked up and I've installed all the drivers so I'm ready to go. When you first open up OBS, you obviously will not have any scenes created. So I'm going to go down here to the scene section and add a new scene and call it demo. So that way I can show you guys what it looks like when you first download OBS. When you first download OBS, you're gonna see this right here. A blank screen, you're only gonna have one scene down here and you're gonna have no sources already set up in the center. With the stream, we have our stream panel and we need to set up our sources. So we're gonna click on the add button down here. And as you can see, we have a lot of options. We have audio input, audio output, browser, display capture, gaming capture, image, etc., video source, window capture, text. We have a lot of different sources that we can add to this screen. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is add in a camera shot. So what you're gonna wanna do is go to add video capture device. You're gonna give it some generic title, such as, I'm just gonna call it demo one. Once you create new, once you give it a name, it's gonna open up this so that you can set up the properties for that source. So right here on the device, you have a drop down where you can see all the devices you have plugged into your computer. So right now I have my webcam, which it's showing right now, which is giving a terrible picture. We have my Logitech HD Pro webcam, the C920. And down here we have EOS webcam utility beta. So I'm gonna first add in the Logitech camera and you can go ahead and click on all these devices to basically see a preview. So right there is the HD full camera. If I click on the EOS webcam utility beta, give it a second here, but it will eventually load in the webcam shot. So right now it is loading, it's loading, it's loading. We gotta wait on the camera to reset itself. The camera has to like reset on this, but right there you can see on the center of the screen that is the top down shot. Now, if you looked on scene number two that I had, you didn't see the full shot. That's because I cropped in and I'll show you how to do that as well. But this is how you basically would add in a video source. I'm gonna click cancel real quick because I've already set up these video sources. So I'm gonna go back to add video capture device and wait for it to, I'm gonna go to add existing. I'm gonna wanna scroll down real quick. Video capture device is what my Logitech is named right now. I need to rename it, but I'm gonna add that in real quick. So right there is my Logitech camera. I can click, I can drag this around so you can slowly see it drag again and I can also resize the shot as well so right there we go we have my Logitech camera placed in here now we need to add another video source let's add in the top-down shot so I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go to add existing click on Canon click OK so give it a second right there is the Canon shot um, and my Canon is already set up with the crop so this has a filter applied to it so that it's cropped down to just my turntables so 
let me quickly, let me resize this real quick. So let me show you guys how I crop that real quick. So basically you're gonna click on whatever source you wanna crop in. So in my taste, the turntable's down here. You're gonna right click on it and you're gonna go to filters. Now in filters, you won't have crop pad already set up. You're gonna wanna click on the add button down here and you have a variety of basically filters that you can apply to this camera shot. Uh, I will tell you right off the bat, chroma key is actually how you green screen. So if you clicked on chroma key, basically you would set up the green to be transparent, which allow you to do a green screen. But in our case, we would click on the crop slash pad. So I'm going to just go to my crop slash pad real quick here. Um, this is what it would look like. But basically right here, you have your left, top, right, and bottom. And you can crop in by the amount of pixels that you would like to do. So on my left here, if I wanted to redo this and make it 150, right there you can see it, it spread out on the left. I can do 150, do 160, then I can go in and do 170. So there you can kind of see, you can adjust your crop. I'm going to bring mine back down to one. 90 so that way I'm cropped in to the correct amount, but right there kind of is how you adjust your crop And actually I need to, I need to adjust my shot right now as you can see on the right hand side It's a little too far out. So I'm gonna go on the right here, and I'm gonna adjust it up to 240 uh, a little bit more Let's go to 250 cool. So right there. I've cropped in my shot so that way It's not the full amount and then I can click close right here um, it automatically saves it. So I click close and now I have a cropped in shot for that video feed. That's great for top down shots if you want to crop in. Also for your wide angle shot, you can crop in if you have wires on the side, etc. In my case though, the Logitech, that is the full shot camera angle right there. And I have no problem getting everything in the field of view with no need to crop in. So that right there is kind of how you set up your video sources. So now that we have video, we need to move on to audio. Audio is probably the most important thing for us DJs for our streams so we need to add in an audio interface so what we're going to want to do is go into add again and we're going to want to go into audio and what we're going to want to do is go into audio input capture that is where basically your audio interface will come in at now I have a variety of them already set up but again I'll show you guys real quick with a demo click create new click ok name already exists all right cool demo 2 click OK. Now, just like with the video source, if right here is our device drop down, and we can see all of our audio input devices that we have. Um, I have my internal microphone, so if you want to use your internal microphone, you can. I have the HD webcam, so my C920 has a webcam microphone built into it, so if I wanted to use that, I could click on that as well. And then also, I have microphone H6. H6 is my Zoom H6 audio interface, so that is what I want to add for my audio source. So I would tap on that, and then I would click OK. Again, in my case though, I already have the audio set up for the H6, so I'm not going to do that. So I'm going to click cancel real quick, and I'm going to go back to my demo scene. So I'm going to go to add existing and I'm going to scroll down to I find H6. H6 again is my audio input device. So now we have our two video sources and we have our audio input. So we should be set and ready to go. And actually, if you look down there on the H6, you can see under audio mixer, that's kind of the next segment we're gonna get to, you can see that the H6 is registering audio and that's because my microphone is on over there. So as I scream basically, the audio is picked up by the H6. So this is the audio mixer and these are basically all of your inputs. One thing you're gonna wanna do is go in and mute everything. So basically, these are the audio faders. You can go through and you can raise them. So this would be your desktop audio. So if you're playing a video on your desktop, that audio would be coming through on your desktop. But basically, you're going to want to go in and mute all of your devices, but your audio interface, which I have already set up. So with the H6, if you are playing music, one thing you're going to want to do is watch your levels. So obviously, we want to do proper DJing with sound, and we don't want to be playing more than 0 dB or plus 3 dB on our mixer. We you don't want to be redlining that is bad so as long as you are not redlining on your mixer and when you are outputting to your audio input device you don't have the mixer redlining you will have a clean audio signal here but if it is a little too hot, you'll notice here that we have the yellow and the red, similar to any audio mixer. You can dial back that audio appropriately to get your audio dialed in for your stream. But that right there in a nutshell is everything you need to know to set up a stream. That's how you add a video source and that is how you add your audio source for your stream. But 
I know you guys want to know some of the cool little things that I have set up that you see on this screen right here, such as that background, such as the text scrolling on the bottom, such as the chat feed on the right. So let me show you some of those additional features as well. So let's go back to the demo real quick. And first off, let me show you guys how to add a background image. So what you're gonna wanna do is basically create a 1920 by 1080, that's 1080p image. And this will be used as your backdrop. So go in Show Express, pixlr.com is a great free way to do it, but you're gonna wanna have some sort of background image. It doesn't have to be that size, but if you're gonna create one, 1920 by 1080 would be recommended for your stream. So uh, what we're gonna do is go to add, and we're gonna add a image. We're gonna click on image here, and I'm gonna add a new one. I'm gonna call it um, coolness, coolness, yeah. Click OK. And then you're gonna be able to browse for that image. So I'm gonna just find a random image. I'm not gonna use my actual backdrop to, to put the image on the backdrop. So basically it opens up a browser window and you go and you go find the picture that you want to use. Um, so inside of my pictures YouTube folder, I have my main background. I also have my top-down background. So these are already pre-created images. You could just find a stock background image too. You don't have to add text to it or anything simple. And just for the heck of it, I'm gonna add in this photo right here, which I called live stream thumb. Open that up to use on this backdrop. So I'm gonna set it up and uh, basically click okay. Now as you see right here, you can obviously resize it accordingly. I'm gonna leave it right where it's at. But one thing to notice is all of our video sources are gone now. And that is because we need to order our layers. So your sources are in layers. So your video sources are in layers. What you're gonna wanna do is right click on the image, go to order, and you're gonna wanna move it to the bottom. There we go. So now we have an image layered on the back with our two video sources. And this video source is behind this video source. That way our top down is more present than our back image as well. When you open up the text input, basically it's very simple. Just input your text. We are doing a tutorial. And then you're gonna wanna click okay. So there we go, we have text. So I can again click and drag wherever I want. I'm gonna put it right in the middle. Now I have my text scrolling on my setup, so I'll show you guys how to do that. It's very simple, it's a filter. So if you right click on text and go to filters, there is a filter to allow scrolling. So if we click on the add button down here, we can go to scroll. Again, there's a lot of different options you can do. Go to scroll real click, click OK, and now it's gonna bring up your scroll settings. So you can do horizontal and vertical. We're gonna wanna do horizontal scrolling, so we're gonna adjust our scroll here a little bit. And now because of my computer just lagging a lot right now trying to do the screen record, you can't really see it, but when you guys are setting this up in OBS when you're not trying to do a screen record, um, and driving your CPU through the roof on your computer, you'll be able to see the scrolling effect while you're setting this up. Again, my CPU just cannot handle this right now. It is a lot to be able to do all this right now. So I'm actually just going to remove the scroll for now. I'm, I'm just going to delete it because one, my computer just cannot handle it. So that is how you set up text inside of OBS. The next thing that we would be setting up is that browser chat. And before I wanna get into that, I wanna kinda show you guys how you stream. So to have the chat, which my chat is coming from my YouTube live chat, I have to show you guys how to set up a YouTube stream. So we're gonna go onto YouTube real quick to set up the stream and then show you guys how you use the stream key, the stream from OBS to the actual stream key. So what we're gonna wanna do first is minimize this and we're gonna open up a browser window and go to YouTube. So when you create a new live stream, basically you're gonna get this new stream area where you can basically enter in your title, enter in your description, entertainment, what time you're gonna do it, monetization, etc. So basically these are all the settings for the live stream itself. Um, is it made for kids, yes or no? And you're gonna wanna click create. All right, so this brings us to the live stream dashboard inside of YouTube. This is where basically everything happens. First off, one thing you're gonna wanna know is after we set up all the stuff that I'm gonna tell you, if you click go stream in OBS, you will not be live on YouTube until you click this go live button at the top right. So that is when you actually start live streaming to YouTube. On the top left here, this is where we can get a preview of what we're streaming from OBS. So inside of OBS, when we click start streaming, we can then go to our YouTube dashboard and verify that we are streaming before we click go live. 
nice little features inside of the YouTube studio. Now, there's one thing that is super important that we are going to need, and that is our stream key. So right down here in the bottom left, we have stream key paste in to encoder. So this right here is what we are going to paste into OBS for them to recognize each other. So copy here. And if you notice, it's all basically passworded out because your stream key is very, very critical. You don't want to let someone else know your stream key because then they can stream to your stream. So that's why they kind of always keep it hidden. That way, if like you're a gamer and you're just setting up your stream live or something like that, your stream key doesn't get leaked. I copied the stream key. So so now we want to go to OBS and some of you guys are actually jumping in and saying hi. Hi, let's get it. I'm not actually live streaming. I'm sorry guys. Let me just let me just reply to them real quick um, and tell them that I'm filming a tutorial. So um yeah, I actually made a mistake when I was setting it up. I set it to public so it was already set. But if you guys are setting up a stream, you're going to want to set up the date, the time. And then you make it public so that way people can set reminders of when you're going to stream. You can also set it as unlisted so that way you can set this stuff up or do a tutorial. Um, but yeah, people are joining in being like, oh my god, oh my god. But um, so with our stream key copied, what we're going to want to do is go back to OBS. All right, so in our settings, what we're going to want to go to is our stream. Now inside of the stream setting, basically mine is actually already set up to do a uh, restream. So with OBS, you can only stream to one source. So YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, whatever you want to stream to, you can only stream to one source. I actually use a service called Restream, and what Restream does is basically I stream to Restream, and then Restream streams to multiple different sources. So with Restream, I can now stream to Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube all at the same time. That might be a future video. It's pretty easy to set up. It's basically the same thing I'm gonna be showing here for YouTube, except like three or four times. Basically, you do the same thing. But that's what Restream is, and that's what I have mine set up to right now, and that's why it's set on custom. But in our case, we're gonna be doing YouTube. So we're gonna click here, and we're gonna go to YouTube, YouTube slash gaming, it's the same thing. So uh, click that, and it automatically generates the server. And now what we're gonna wanna do is paste in our stream key right here. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna delete all of this, and I'm going to paste in our stream key. So now we have our stream key pasted. You can click apply down here, and we are ready to go in terms of streaming. Cool, so we have the whole entire stream set up, ready to go. Now I can show you though that cool little chat feature. So how you put your YouTube chat inside of your stream so that way it's basically all there on the same thing um, that way people can watch it on playback and also people just love seeing the stream um, chat live even though the stream chats like right there wherever their device is it's kind of cool to be able to see it on the screen as well so what I'm gonna show you is uh, basically we're gonna to wanna to go to YouTube first, so that way I can kind of explain. So over here on the right hand side of the YouTube preview window, we have the live chat. And this is what we wanna show for our viewers. So one cool thing about YouTube, if you see these three little dots at the top here, if you click on those, you have the option to do pop out chat. And what it does is opens up the chat in its own separate window. And basically it has its own URL. So what you can do, is you can then copy that URL, go back to OBS, under sources we can add in a browser window. So I'm gonna click on browser, and I'm gonna give it a new name like chat six. In the URL window we can paste that URL, and then hyphen width, I'm gonna go with like 500 by 800. You can play around with it, but I think that's what I used the first time. Click OK, and you gotta give it a second to actually load in the chat, but it will open up that source and it will show it here in a second. And with the magic of editing, um, there is the actual chat window itself. So I can click on it, drag it around. Let's say I wanna put it in the top right here, and I wanna make it bigger so that you can actually read it. There we go. Now, if you saw my stream, you didn't actually see where it said top chat at the top or you didn't see the bottom where it says say something. And what I did is very similar to the camera. What I did was add a crop filter. So if I right click on this, I can then go to my filters and I can add a crop. So we can go to add here and we can add in the crop. So inside of the actual crop, we can crop in all the way we want. So on the top, we want to lower that down, let's say by 30. There we go. So it brought the top down enough. We also want to raise the bottom. Uh, I'm going to raise the bottom by 50. That should get us far enough above so that we don't really see any of the bottom. 
Um, actually, we need to go a little bit more. Let's go like 70. That should cut off all that bottom portion. There we go. So I set my crop. I moved the top in by 30. Uh, the right moved over by 9 so you don't see the scroll window. And moved the bottom up by basically 100. So I can click close now. And now our chat is reformed so that we don't see all that extra fluff. We just see the chat. And that right there is it. We are good to go and we are ready to live stream. Again, we just gotta click start streaming. Then we go into YouTube and we click go live and we are all done. So that's all for this video guys. I'm actually live streaming right now just for the heck of it. This is basically what I would look at basically. I got OBS running over here. I made a full screen this time. Then again, I'm also running Show Express in the background so that way I have my control as well. But that is what the OBS screen looks like. I'm fully live streaming right now as seen right here there's the live chat right there of everyone that's on here we got like 47 people on here just for me to do a demo video that's that's crazy but they're actually listening to music right now i got my monitors turned off what's up chat what's up anybody wants to say hi in the chat like spam it now This is dope. This is dope. There's the fire emojis. Chat spamming. Chat spamming. Anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That was basically a full walkthrough of how my live streaming setup is like set up and how I do it in OBS. So hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to slap a like. Leave down in the comment section down below if you guys want me to jump into anything else in a future video. My name is DJ Web. Keep the record spinning, and I will see you guys next time. Peace.